Hello everyone, this is the last video of the basic scripting series. This video is about how to make anything. You've learned the basics of Lua scripting and Roblox scripting. You've also learned about the client and server. And now I think you're ready for the final material, how to make anything. But Sushi, how does one make anything? Don't you need infinite knowledge to do so? Don't you need to know everything? You don't actually. What you need is to be able to learn something new or apply your pre-existing knowledge to make something. This video teaches exactly that. Now you may be demotivated by the overwhelming tutorials on the internet using complex code and whatnot. And if you're not, just, just ignore this entire segment. So I've actually failed learning coding plenty of times. I kept using free models and ended up inside of tutorial hell where I only rely on tutorials for literally anything, copying them word by word, and when it doesn't work, I always blame on the tutorial and started looking for the next. It's a cycle I couldn't escape. I didn't even have knowledge on basic scripting, and this is the state I was in when I made my first couple of videos. Wait, what? You might be saying that you were lecturing people when you literally didn't know anything? And please don't panic. The first few videos have been private. I sound very different back then. And I know how to script them, so, so don't worry about it, please. I know how to script them, don't worry. And, and how I learned to script is I somehow stumbled into a video teaching a noob scripting in one hour. I was trying to look for the video to link it in, in this video, right? But I couldn't find it for some reason. It, it's a YouTube video where there's a guy, right, in Roblox, teaches his friend how to script within one hour. And that actually taught me all of the basics. After that video, I could actually script on my own. I finally cracked the code. I know how things work now. And when you're watching this current video, you should have basic scripting knowledge from the last two videos or more. But if you don't, then please pause this video and watch the last two videos on the series. So how do you make anything? The first instinct you have when trying to make something is to search up a tutorial on how to make the whole thing. Which is fine when you know what you're doing, but as a beginner, please scrap that idea. At least until you consider yourself good enough to do so. You can however look up tutorials or the developer wiki on certain built-in functions or services. Contrary to popular belief, coding is mostly problem solving and how you logically approach something rather than memorization of the functions and whatnot because coding is just a set of instructions you tell to a computer so then you would need to plan something before you start coding this part of development is what makes developers scratch their heads thinking of a way to plan their entire system so now you must know where i'm getting at so how do you make anything there are three stages to this like I've said before, planning. Planning is important. That's the first stage. You might think planning is as simple as I want to create a fireball and I want this fireball to be good. No, no. You must think every step into making it. The first step is input detection. The second step is creating a ball. The third step is making the ball do damage. The fourth step is to make the ball move. And the last step is to make the ball disappear when it hits something or after a few seconds. A lot of developers plan in their heads, I always do so as well, but when you write it down, everything becomes easier. As anything in life really, when you have problems, you will think about them and it will be hard to solve and you, when you finally stumble across a solution, you, you somehow forget about it and that's why you should write it down. It's, it makes things easier. You should apply this in your life as well. And there's actually a lot of methods such as pseudocodes and other methods to plan out your code. Now you might not know how to do some of these steps like let's say how do you make the ball move or how do you make the ball disappear or how, how do you even create the ball. Now because you've planned the fireball into clear steps, you can google exactly what you need to learn. You will learn a lot from this. So the first step is input detection and you said let's say hey. How do you do input detection in Roblox? So let's google how to do input detection in Roblox. 
and then oh you find the wiki or something a, a dev forum a roblox wiki anything a youtube video or something oh you need to use user input service okay then how do you create a bot oh there's a built-in function called instance.new that creates a ball but now how do you make it do damage oh so these parts actually have a built-in event from dot touch so you get the gist of it the second stage is actually to code it you can combine the stage with stage one if you're confident enough at least when you code you plan things out while you code it's not a good way to do it but there a lot of devs do it and it works but it's, it's not that good it's really bad actually so if you're confident you can go ahead and do that all right now let's actually code the fireball okay so this is my roblox studio we're going to be creating um, the input script so add a local script and start player scripts this way this script gets created inside of the player therefore we don't need to wait for the character to load and stuff so like we've searched up before you need to use game get service user input service in the dev forum no in the developer wiki so this is a service and there's an event called input begin there's two parameters that you receive input and game process here i'll just um, type in typing so yeah we just check the input key code to the key code we want which is enum key code r so when we click r i want to fire the remote okay so we do if typing then turn on right here to make sure that we we aren't typing and then as i'm doing right now making a remote event to fire to the server to communicate from the client to the server and reference the remote event with a variable game replicate storage wait for child fireball remote and then remote fire server in the input key code if statement okay that's all for the local script now let's create the server script okay let's add in a server script right here okay so let's create a variable that accesses the fireball remote so we need to use wait for child for it to wait for the fireball remote to exist because this script exists before everything else so we'll have to use that and then there's an event on server event as i've um, explained before in my previous videos actually and then we receive a player um, parameter we can get the character from player.character and then we create a variable using instance.new we searched this up before we need to do instance.new we add in the parameter which is part we need to create a part and then to make this a ball we need to change the shape to enum part type dot ball actually no it's sphere what did i is it ball oh, it's it's ball not sphere okay then size i accidentally did um factor 3.new 000 for some reason and then so yeah this is uh, an error this is a bug that we're going to be fixing then set the size yeah so as you can see right here there is a problem in this code but i'll tell you later and then we set the brick color to bright orange set the material to plastic we don't need this and then just set the properties set the rest of the properties and stuff cast shadow change the name to fireball and then get the root part from character the root part there's a problem with this but let's talk about it later so set the position to root part dot frame dot look vector times what 10 okay there's a problem again we're going to be talking about it later set the parent to workspace so that we can see it so that the ball actually exists inside of the workspace and then to make the fireball move we use body velocity you can google this up how to make yeah use body velocity most projectiles use body velocity this is the simplest way to do it there's plenty of other ways to do it that's more complicated yeah you just set the max force to vector 3.new and uh, just write in a huge number right here i did math.huge for each parameter and then the velocity 2000 no not 2000 100 so the the direction the character is facing and then times the speed because it's a unit right it's a unit so it's a so you need to 
uh, multiply to something. Set the parent to fireball, and then to make the fireball be able to damage, as we've shared that before, you need to use a dot touched event. Here, there's a hit parameter, and you can get the character from hit find first ancestor of class model. So you just in case you hit a hair or something. Then you will be able to find the humanoid. So you need to make sure that it's an ancestor of model. And then we check if the character exists. If it does, then we create a human variable from find for child of class humanoid. Then a humanoid take damage. Uh, the damage 100. No, that's too much. 50. That's good. And then we just destroy the variable. No, not the variable. The fireball. Okay, so that works. And then to make it dis disappear after a few seconds, just do game debris, add item, fireball, and add in the second five. Now I'll just add a print to make sure everything works for debugging. As I've said before, the debugging, you can use prints for debugging. That's what I use normally. And then yeah, let's try it out. Here I just removed plastic because it's redundant. It's already plastic. Yeah, let's try it out. Alright, so there's a problem with this code. Now let's go on to the final stage, which is bug fixing. So this is one of the bugs that are really obvious because there's an error. Part is not a valid member of Sushi Master. So it's actually called primary part, not root part. So that's where I got it wrong. Primary part. You know, let me fix it. I'm fixing it right here. Primary part. There we go. Let's play again. Why is the fireball not appearing? And then the first instinct was to check if it exists in the workspace. Because if it exists in the workspace, then where the hell is it? Okay. And then you're confused. Yo, where is it? How? Oh, is it the position? Yeah, the position is actually wrong. Because that is just the unit vector and the, the distance from the unit vector. So I set it to the position of the root part. Okay, so it's working. It exists, but it damages me instantly. So let's add. Um, let's add if character is not our character. Okay. So oh yeah, but the variable is the same as our character. So let's just do hit character for the character that we hit. That makes sense. Hit character. So that's another bug. There's another. That's that's another issue. So let's just do hit character for this, replace every character with hit character for the character that we are hitting. Self-explanatory. Then I realized here, oh, we need to add some distance. We can't just spawn it inside of our root part. So I'll do plus root part receive frame root blue vector times five. So there's a five, five stud distance right here. And then I press R again, and then it's, an, it's not appearing. See, it's not appearing. Where is it? Here I thought, oh, maybe it's because of the distance, because of the five set distance. So I removed that, and then uh, it's still not working. So then why? Why is that? Then I look at my script again, and oh look, it's zero zero zero. It did exist, but the size is just zero, so we cannot see it. So then I added back the line where it um, adds a five set distance. I did ten here for some reason. It's way too far, and. Um, there we go, it works now. So it doesn't fly immediately, it creates it and stop it creates it and it doesn't fly. So it's like a point one second where it just sits there for no reason. So why is that? It's something advanced. Alright, so this is the final video of the basic scripting series. Now hopefully you should be able to make stuff yourself. And thank you so much and goodbye.